Hello everyone. This story is about, what if Naruto was raised by the ANBU and fall in love with Ino? He is very strong and smart, being a Fuinjutsu genius and trained by the ANBU commander Ryo. Please like, share and subscribe for more amazing stories like this one. Now let's start. Many a time Naruto imagined himself playing the hero of a beautiful princess. Like in the stories his sisters enjoyed reading to him before bed, he'd swoop in from the skies, alit in golden flames with his Kanoha Hitaite shining like a hopeful beacon. And rescue the poor damsel in distress from the evils that threatened Hono Kuni. The people would cheer and the daimyo would award him for his valor, before the princess would reward him with a kiss on the cheek. But his daydreams shattered to reveal a harsh reality. He made the princess cry and she ran away from him, tears falling and her face burning. She must have been very angry at him, and he assumed that without her courtly graces, she would have slapped him and probably had him flogged for his insolence. Honest to himself, Naruto wondered if he would feel better if she did slap him or punish him, he'd prefer anything than to have her completely ignore him. How is he, Tsunade? Is Oniyasama going to be all right? asked Momokoheim. The daimyo's voice broke Naruto from his inner conflict, and he realized that he had followed his godparents into one of the inner palaces of the royal home. Recalling his studies, he assumed this was the Nainamaru Palace, the residence of the daimyo's concubines and children. It was another wooden edifice of impressive, aged architecture, guarded fully by a perimeter of armed spearmen a distance away. He recalled reading that no men were allowed in except for the daimyo and his young sons, but he assumed in his blankness, the daimyo had allowed him and his godfather permission. They were standing in one of the many rooms of the palace, and this one was particularly spacious, covered edge to edge in the finest silks and each wall was adorned with several old paintings. A line of maids led up to the large bed where his godmother and Shizun stood, hovering over a person who must have been the ailed prince. Naruto tried to glance at the prince, but his whole body was basically covered by people, especially with the daimyo hovering over him like a worried hawk. Yamada Uji should be fine, answered Tsunade, her hand pressed against the prince's forehead, glowing brightly with healing chakra. It's just a simple flu, no need for any worries. Give him a few more days of rest, keep him hydrated, and he should be back on his feet before long. That's good to hear, muttered the daimyo. Thank you, Tsunade-sama, came a weak and frail voice, one Naruto, assumed, belonged to the prince. He saw his godmother smile, you're very welcome, Yamada Uji. She stood from the bed and nodded, but as usual, lunch or better, make sure you get plenty of exercise and food. A young boy like you needs to eat as much as you can, and train as much as you can. Don't worry, we'll turn you into a strapping young man soon enough. The prince weakly chuckled, I will, Tsunade-sama. Thank you for your help again, Tsunade. The daimyo offered the Sanin a curt nod, a small smile gracing his face. You are truly a blessing to our family and country. His smile grew, and now that you're returning to Kanoha, it'll be much easier to seek your expertise when necessary. Tsunade's smile tightened, I'm at your service, daimyo-sama. Very good, the daimyo replied, now, what else do we need to do? Nothing, Tsunade answered, my student Shizun will prescribe a list of herbs and medicine to your personal aid. Just have them make sure the prince takes his medicine on time and never on an empty stomach. She smiled, he'll be fine in a few days. We won't be needed here to watch him, so with your permission, we'll make our way back to Kanoha. She sighed, it seems that I am needed there as well. Of course, but before then, I'm afraid I'll need to bother you and Jiraiya for a moment more. The daimyo glanced at Jiraiya before turning back to Tsunade, there is something we must discuss. I was going to send a raven to the Sandame, but seeing you both are here, I may as well have you both relay my concerns back to your Hokage. Jiraiya approached the old man, of course, Daimyo-sama. What would you like to discuss? Not here, the man added, come join me in my office again. We'll talk there. Tsunade nodded and stood beside Jiraiya, as you wish, Daimyo-sama. Naruto was about to follow, but the Daimyo turned to look at him. Young Namakase Kuen, he started as Naruto stood tall and ready, why don't you stay here and introduce yourself to my son? You two are about the same age and I'd like for him to make a new friend. Naruto bowed, hi, Daimyo-sama. The Daimyo smiled before walking off, his trail of maids following him, well, please come along, Tsunade, Jiraiya. There is much to talk about. At another moment, Naruto was left alone in the room with Yamada Uji and Momokoheim. He glanced over at them and saw the prince looking over at him, but the princess was looking anywhere but at him. Braving a breath, he stepped forward and bowed to the royal siblings, before saluting them. It's an honor to meet you, Yamato-sama. 
Naruto stood tall and straight, my name is Namike Zuzumaki Naruto, a genin of Kanahigakure no Sato. Genin, came the soft voice of the prince, you're a genin? You look quite young to already be a ninja. How old are you? Naruto looked at the prince, and saw the slightly older boy smiling at him, I am eight years old, but I will be nine years old next week. Yamada's smile widened, so you are especially young to be a genin. You must be quite talented to be promoted, so quickly, during times of peace. Naruto smiled back, nodding slightly. Your family name, Namike Zuzumaki. Those are quite famous if I recall correctly. Are you perhaps related to the late Yandame Hokage? Naruto saw the princess glance at him, but answered professionally, the Yandame Hokage is my father, Yamato Ujisama. My mother was Uzumaki Kushina, who was the Uzumaki clan head even after she married my father. The Sandame Hokage saw it fit for me to inherit both their family names. He glanced at the princess, who immediately turned away from him. I'm still a newly appointed genin, so please pardon my unprofessionalism today. No, not at all, replied the prince, struggling to sit up on his bed, you're quite well spoken. Let me help you, Oniai-sama. The princess helped her older brother up, the prince resting his back fully against a pillow. Thank you, Momoko. He looked at Naruto with a smile, for someone so young, I was expecting you to behave more immaturely. Am I right to assume that like me, as a son of the leader, you were groomed to behave as such? Naruto returned a smile, I'm sure it's part of the reason, but I grew up in a very militaristic home. Discipline and discretion have been engraved into my brain. I should have guessed, though. Yamada sat up taller against his bed with a grunt, no regular child, genin or not, would be traveling together with two of the legendary Sanin. He smiled again. You don't have to worry about being too polite. You're the son of a Kage and a clan head. Politically speaking, you're a visiting prince in your own right. Naruto's eyes widened, please drop your honorifics. We are of equal station, after all. We most certainly are not, Ujisama. Naruto stepped back, slightly bowing his head. You're right, answered the prince softly, I am actually only the second son. You are the only son of the Yandame Hokage, so technically, you're of higher standing than me. Naruto pursed his lips, please don't tease me. Yamada laughed, I'm not. He coughed a bit, relax a bit. We're basically the same age. We have enough polite ninja around here already. Just call me Yamada, and I'll call you Naruto. He sighed as he rested his breathing, for once I'd like a friend around here. A friend? asked Naruto. Believe it or not, we don't get to see a lot of children around here. It's just me and my sisters. You're the first boy around my age that I've ever met. I am? Naruto asked, stepping closer to the prince. You are, he replied, so I really don't need you to be so formal. Naruto smiled and nodded at the sick boy, well, as you command, Yamada-san. He chuckled as the prince smiled, and I actually understand your plight quite well myself. I also grew up with a lot of older siblings. I didn't meet anyone my own age until just a few months ago. Yamada looked surprised as the princess spared him a glance. I get what you mean. Looking around and only seeing adults around you, feeling like a little child all the time. Yamada nodded, yes, exactly that. And the babying. Naruto exclaimed, crossing his arms with a huff, it's like I've never grown up at all. My sisters still remind me to take a shower and brush my teeth. You think that's bad, added Yamada, my older sisters, don't even let me enter the kitchen by myself. They keep saying I'd fall in the fire, or cut myself with stray knives. Sometimes I think my sisters are stalking me, added Naruto, I can't sense them that easily, but I know they're watching over me whenever they're not on missions. Like, I don't have any privacy at all. Yep, I get you. My sisters still ask me to bathe with them. No, thanks. I'm ten years old. It's not like I'm a little kid anymore. Yamada-san, you know exactly how I feel. Naruto grinned, finally someone understands. Just Yamada, is fine, Naruto. The prince smiled, friends aren't supposed to use honorifics with each other. I like you, Yamada. Naruto sighed in relief, I was really nervous coming here for the first time, but you've made it really relaxing. Thank you. I'm really glad to be your friend. He smiled at the smiling prince, I used to think making friends is really hard, but now, I actually have quite a few. He stood closer to Yamada. If you ever visit Kanoha, I'll introduce you to all of them. I'd like that. 
Yamada sighed, the only person around my age here, is Momoko. He looked at his sister, by the way, why are you being so quiet, Momoko? I, I am not being quiet, the princess turned away from them. Naruto frowned, I'm afraid it is my fault. The princess flinched at his voice, I'm Sama, I'm really sorry. I really did think someone was trying to target Daimyo-sama, so I acted as I would with an enemy. Had I known you liked to hide in the ceiling panels, I would have never handled you so roughly. What happened? asked the prince, looking at the burning red princess. Nothing, cried the girl, it's nothing. Naruto sighed, but the princess actually turned around to look at him. She was very red, her face almost matching her hair, but she managed to look into his eyes. I'm not mad, Namake-san, not at all. She blushed to her roots, but she balled her fists, and continued, I'm glad you were so diligent in protecting my father. I'm, I'm just not used to interacting with someone my age, especially a boy. She glanced at him, like my brother, I've never really met anyone my age before. I was just surprised. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Naruto gave an easy smile, thank goodness. I was really afraid you'd be mad at me, Haim-sama. Why you, she stuttered, glancing at him shyly, you don't have to use honorifics with me either, and Naruto Kuen. She looked away again, I'd like to be your friend, too. Can I call you? He murmured as he tried to look at her, following her wavering eyes as she shyly looked away, can I call you Momokoheim? She nodded, her face turning red. Can I call you Momoko-chan? She squeaked and turned away fully, completely red. Naruto smiled, finding the princess to be extremely cute. With his hands behind his back, the boy sidestepped, slowly peeking at her burning face. Or should I call you Haimchan? Jay just call me whatever you want, she cried, finally turning to glare at him, her lips quivering. Naruto laughed and backed away, I'm sorry for teasing, Momoko-chan. You're just too cute and I can't help it. She squeaked again, turning away from him. I promise I won't do it anymore. Sorry about that. Yamada stared at the two, are you okay, Momoko? You're really red. He leaned closer to look at his sister, I don't think I've ever seen you so red. Are you feeling okay? We should ask for Tsunade-sama, if you're coming down with a fever. I'm fine, Oni-sama. Naruto saw the similarities between the reactions of the princess, and those of Sakura-chan and Ina-chan. They all seemed to blush in the same way, and would try to avoid eye contact. Their voices would turn high-pitched, and sometimes they'd yell at him. Perhaps he really was making them feel uncomfortable, he wasn't too sure, but either way, it was better to be safe than sorry. Momoko-chan, he started, waiting until the princess spared him a glance. If I ever make you feel uncomfortable, please let me know. As I said, I've never really met anyone my age until just a few months ago. In fact, you're the third girl my age I've ever met. I'm still learning the proper way to talk to girls my age, so please tell me if I'm being overly familiar or friendly. She slowly turned to face him, her face still burning red, you're fine, I guess, she whispered, I've never spoken to a boy my age ever, so I wouldn't know for sure. Oh, Naruto said as he grinned, then we can find out together. She gave him a small smile and nodded, I'd like that. So, he said as he stepped closer to the princess, will you be my friend, Momoko-chan? She grinned and nodded, I will, Naruto Kuen. Yamada stared at the two still, but suddenly coughed loudly into his elbow. He groaned and slowly slid back onto his bed, covering himself fully under the comforter. Naruto and Momoko approached the bed, but the prince waved them off, keeping them at a distance. I don't want to give either of you my flu, he muttered, already weak and tired, Momoko, why don't you show Naruto around the palace? I'm sure there are many places he'd like to see. Are you sure? asked Naruto, we can stay here with you if you want. Momoko nodded. No, I should get some rest, and you too, shouldn't be so close to a sick person. Yamada smiled, you probably won't stay for long, Naruto, but the next time you visit. I'll be sure to be a better host. Naruto waved him off, you've already been more than gracious, Yamada. I'll be sure to come back to visit you, my friend. And perhaps next time you both can visit Kanoha. Naruto smiled at the prince before turning to the princess, there are a lot of places I can show you there, and a lot of friends you can meet. I'd like that. Yamada nodded with a smile. We'll let you rest then, Naruto gave a slight bow, I'll see you later, Yamada. Until next time, Naruto. I'll come to see you later, Oni-sama. Momoko frowned, before leading Naruto to the door. 
So, Naruto asked as they left the room, welcoming the bright sunlight, where do you want to go now? Jiraiya joined Tsunade and sat across from the daimyo, silently waiting for the attendants to finish pouring the freshly steeped tea. They were set around a small wooden table, intricately carved and perfectly balanced, and the sage wondered if it was one of many gifts the Shodai Hokage had given to the royal family. The relationship between the royal family and the Senju clan was paramount in the creation of Kanoha, and their story was still often regaled around the country. Now, joined by the current daimyo and Senju clan head in such a setting, Jiraiya wondered if he was out of place. There was a messenger in the night, started the daimyo, his fan hiding his lips as he stared at the two sanin. It brings news from Mount Sakuna. Jiraiya's eyes narrowed, news of the bandit king? The daimyo nodded, yes. Who, asked Tsunade, sipping on her tea, I'm afraid this is all news to me. Ever since a year ago, we've been receiving sporadic reports of bandits, gathering around Mount Sakuna. This mountain is located near the southeastern border of Haino Kuni, just a few miles from the coast. Normally, this wouldn't be of much concern. I'd simply have the Hokage send a few teams of Chunin to clear them out, but the situation has since changed. The daimyo sighed. New reports suggest that a massive amount of bandits have gathered in the mountain, numbering over 3,000. And it seems that they all follow one man, a self-proclaimed bandit king. Tsunade raised a brow, but they are still only bandits. A few teams of Chunin with some paper bombs should be enough to smoke them out. She finished her cup, even with those numbers, they'd only be fish in a barrel. All attempts at dispersing the group have failed thus far. The daimyo looked worried, Kanoha has dispatched five teams of Chunin, spread out over three missions. The first mission sent one team, then the second sent another, and a third rescue mission sent the last three. All five teams have since been classified as MIA, and given the time that has passed, they are now presumed dead. Five teams, asked Tsunade, eyes widened, these can't be bandits. All reports suggest they are, added Jiraiya. Sarutobi-sensei briefly caught me up to these events before I left Kanoha to find you, Haim. He crossed his arms, since the teams went missing. A tracking team was sent out to find any sort of trail. A Hyuga was among them, and with the Byakugan, our man saw an army of bandits, numbering into the thousands, and confirmed that none of them, not even one of them, had any developed chakra pathways. Not even one? Tsunade frowned. None at all, so no distinct leader, could be identified. Jiraiya refilled her cup, the tracking team attempted to capture one of the bandits for questioning. But none of them ever leaves the mountain, and because of the strangeness of Mount Sakuna and the already missing teams, they chose to regroup back to Kanoha. Mount Sakuna, wondered Tsunade, what's special about it? It rests near the southeastern coast, very close to Yuzu no Kuni. Tsunade's eyes narrowed, ever since the destruction of Yuzushi Obikure. There have been many tales of vengeful spirits lingering around the mountain. People avoid the mountain now, but passersby tell stories of ghost fires and shrieking wails in the night. Because of these urban legends, the mountain has largely been abandoned by civilization. No one mines near it and no lumberjack would ever harvest upon it. Now all of a sudden, interrupted the daimyo, over 3,000 men chose to gather on it, standing behind the banner of this one man. Jiraiya looked at the daimyo, the messenger in the night, he asked, what did he say? Another wave of bandits has joined the bandit king. The daimyo rested his fan on the ground. Over 2,000 men somehow marched through the heavily guarded valley unopposed and have joined the ranks of this motley crew of outcasts. Where are these people coming from, asked Tsunade, there is no way someone could amass so many bandits in Haino Kuni without Kanoha knowing. Reports suggest they are coming from the sea. Jiraiya sighed, we have found scattered remains of sunken wooden planks along the coast. It seems these bandits have been arriving by many boats or a few large ships during the night. It's likely they destroyed their own ship after arriving, trying to erase their tracks. No ship logs were found at all, nor were there any maker's mark on the wooden remains, so we have no idea where their home port is. But because they are arriving by sea, they could be from anywhere around the continent. I do not care about their origin, but rather their purpose. The daimyo shook his head, they destroyed their own ships, so none of them expected to go back. They're either here to stay or here to fight to the death. Neither option is unacceptable. He sighed, I am officially assigning a new mission, for Kanoha, S-ranked. Jiraiya and Tsunade nodded. I want the complete annihilation of this group. Send Jonin, ANBU, or even the two of you, I don't care. I want these people dealt with, and I want this bandit king executed. We understand, Daimyo-sama. 
Jiraiya nodded, I'm rather curious about this myself, so I will look into it personally. Tsunade added, I will be back in Kanoha as well, so if need be, I can offer some backup. Jiraiya smiled at her, with you with me, they're as good as dead. Are you sure you can show me this? asked Naruto. This seems like very sensitive information, Momoko-chan. It's fine, she said, smiling as she led him down a darkened hallway, these hidden paths have been here for decades already. Naruto followed her closely. Their small bodies barely able to walk through the narrowed lane. No one remembers them anymore. I think my great-great-grandfather built them into the palace as an emergency escape route. She looked back at Naruto with a smile, I'm the only one who knows about them now. How did you even find it? he asked, struggling to see in the dark. Just by coincidence. One of the entrances to these hidden paths is through the closet in my room. I accidentally knocked through the entrance one time and I found these hidden paths. They approached a small light ahead, there are these small windows every once in a while. And if you look outside, you'll know where you are. Naruto peeked outside the small eye hole and saw the garden they passed earlier, so we're along the outer walls of the palace right now. Yep, the princess said, these paths go everywhere in the palace. I think in the case of emergency, this is used for hiding and escaping, so there should be an entrance to these pathways in every royal room. I've tried to explore the whole thing, but some of the entrances are blocked. I think over time, some of the entrances collapsed, and only a few remaining still work. Naruto grinned at the princess, I have to say, Momoko-chan, this is really, really cool. Right? I've read so many stories about palaces and wars, but I didn't think there'd actually be hidden pathways like these. He peeped through the hole and saw the guards changing shifts outside. The design of each path and the locations of all of these eye holes must be very strategic. This isn't the best part, Naruto Kuen. She pulled on his sleeve, come on, I'll show you the rest. Let's go. When Naruto left the prince's room with the princess, he expected a simple stroll through the gardens or to share an elegant tea ceremony. Never did he expect his newest friend to really give him a tour around the palace. She led him to one of the many rooms around the palace, and because of Momoko, no one dared to even glance their way, and they had arrived at the main library. In the far corner of the large room, the princess showed Naruto a secret entrance to the hidden pathways through a movable bookshelf. It was a towering wooden shelf, but it seemed to be resting on greased wheels, because the small and dainty princess managed to pull it open with ease. Naruto felt a bit hesitant, but the dark and deep tunnel was too tempting to resist, so he followed the princess straight inside. Now, deep into the palace walls and through every possible royal room, Naruto followed the princess to a hidden open space. The narrow path opened to a room lined with small eye holes all around, and most remarkably, the room was furnished. It had its own stocked bookshelves, a small sofa for reading, a small wooden table at the center, and even a small rug for a soft floor. There were also many pathways leading out of the room, indicating that this room was the center of the whole network of pathways. Wow, what is this? he asked. I found this room a few years ago, the princess said, her smile now, clear in the light, shining through the eye holes. This is probably the room where we're meant to gather in case of an emergency. It has eye holes in all directions, and we can basically see every part of the palace from here. She pointed to one of the pathways, if we take that path over there, it leads to my father's office. That's where I was when you pulled me down from the ceiling. I was trying to see what was happening. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, again, I'm sorry about that. Momoko giggled, it's okay. I'm over it now. He smiled at her. Luckily for you, that part of the pathway is pretty much collapsed anyway, so I don't think anyone would discover this network even when they patch the ceiling. That's good. This room is basically my secret fort. The princess bounced on her feet as she smiled, I come here every day and just watch everyone outside. I can eat in here, drink in here, and even read in here. Naruto grinned, I have a secret fort with my best friend back in Kanoha as well. He suddenly missed Ino, knowing she'd love this as well. We go there every day, too. I love these things. Momoko smiled and nodded back. Do you and Yamada come here to play? Oh, no, she said, I can't show Oniisama this. He's a spoil sport sometimes, and he might tell father about this if I tell him. She frowned, also, these pathways are really dusty. And Oniisama's cough would get really bad if he tries to walk through here. So, you've never told him about this? I've never told anyone about this, she said as she looked into his eyes, you're the first person I've told. Really? Me? 
I can't tell my brother or any of my sisters. They would bother me non-stop if I told them about this. She pouted, I've always wanted to play with a friend in here, so I just had to show you. Naruto smiled, well, thank you for showing me, Momoko-chan. You're welcome. She pulled on his arm, now let me show you. Naruto followed the princess to one of the eye holes. If you looked out here, you can see the royal garden, the inner garden at the center of the palace. Father walks through here all the time, but at this time of day, my oldest brother is probably there. He likes to take breaks in the garden. Naruto looked through the hole and saw a large group of people following one man, maids, and attendants. Some were following the man while holding trays of snacks and drinks, some were holding a large umbrella over the man's head, and there was even one man literally holding on to the man's coattails. Not letting it drag on the ground. The man himself was a rather heavy-set man with thick jowls and puffy cheeks. He had rather thick black hair tied into a bun and wore a stately yukata that reminded Naruto of the one worn by the daimyo. He aimlessly walked along the garden paths, occasionally stopping to smell the flowers, but he was looking at someone in the distance. Naruto couldn't see who it was from this eyehole. So that's Hikaru Jasama, muttered Naruto, he really looks different from Yamada. He acts very differently, too. Momoko sighed, Hikaru Aniyasama is father's eldest and will become daimyo in the future, but he doesn't like to study at all. Yamada Aniyasama is much smarter than he is, but he acts like he's the best of everyone. Naruto glanced at the princess, do you not like him or something? She shrugged, no, I just love my other brother more. Hikaru Aniyasama is just lazy, but he is nice most of the time. He needs to work harder because he's going to be daimyo. He spends most of his time just wandering around the palace and eating extra lunches and dinners. Who's it looking at now? asked Naruto, moving to the next eye hole. Let me see, said the princess as she looked through the hole, oh, that's my Okasama. Your mother? Naruto asked, looking through the hole, let me see. Naruto saw a woman who looked like an older version of Momoko, with the same shade of red hair and pale skin. She was beautiful, almost as beautiful as Tsunade-sama. She was wearing a long, flowing red kimono, and she was wandering through the garden with her handmaidens, trailing behind her, fanning her face. Naruto noted that his own other shared that same shade of red hair, and upon recalling his mother's face in her old pictures, Naruto decided that his mother was far more beautiful than this woman. You look a lot like her, Momoko-chan. Yeah, I guess I do. Naruto looked back at her sullen tone. Sorry, did I say something wrong? Momoko shook her head, no, nothing like that. A lot of people say the same thing, that I look a lot like my mother, and I should grow up to be just like her. She frowned, almost a pout. But I don't want to be like her, not at all. What? Naruto carefully asked. She's a mean person, Naruto-kun. She huffed, she's always telling Oni-sama that he's weak and someone with her blood shouldn't be so weak. She's not like the other ladies in the palace. My aunts are all so much nicer than her. Worst of all, when father is looking, she's all nice and loving, but as soon as he's gone, she goes on and on about how Oni-sama should be tougher and should act like a man. Naruto frowned, I don't like that. I hate it, said the girl vehemently, it's not like Oni-sama wants to be sick all the time. Is she mean to you, too? he asked. No, Momoko said, she always says that she's proud of me because I'm strong and healthy like her, but I still hate how she talks about Oni-sama. She shook her head, when I grow up. I'm not going to be like her at all. I'll love all my children equally, no matter if they're strong or not. Naruto smiled, you're really cool, Momoko-chan. She blushed a little, but smirked, I know I am. They spent another hour in the room, chatting about themselves. Naruto learned that the princess enjoyed rice cakes, traditional sweets, and iced tea. She had never tried ramen before, but he promised to take her to Ataraku if she would ever visit Kanoha. He shared that he aimed to become Hokage one day, and she promised that if that day ever came, she'd be there to congratulate him as a princess of Hai no Kuni. They would have gone on, but the sun was starting to set and Naruto knew they would have to leave soon. Momoko led them out of her secret fort and back into the hidden paths, this time in the opposite direction of where they had come. After another long series of narrow hallways, they exited into the princess closet. This is my room, and this is where I usually enter the hidden paths. Naruto looked around and saw a regal bedroom befitting a royal princess. 
Silk curtains hung from the ceiling, surrounding the silk-laden bed, all red and pink in color. It also smelled of a subtle sweetness, like strawberries and cherries. It was delightful, and very suitable for the cute princess. We can't stay here for long, though. I can't let my sister see you in here. She dragged him along by the hand, pulling him out of her room, come on. Naruto stepped into the setting sunlight, ready to run, but the princess suddenly stopped. Well, who do we have here, came a new voice, girlish and cheerful. Naruto refocused his eyes, and saw four girls standing in front of them, all somehow all of them were extremely cute and beautiful. They were all dressed similarly to Momoko-chan, all in silk and fancy jewelry, but they all had different hair colors. From the shortest to tallest, they had blue hair, green hair, brown hair, and black hair. They were all looking at him and Momoko, slyly smiling at them. And they saw Momoko-chan, why did you have a boy in your room, asked the brown-haired lady, is there something you want to tell us? Momoko blushed to the roots of her hair, looking like a tomato, T this is Namake Zuzumaki Naruto, she managed. He's visiting us, along with Tsunade-sama, and Jiraiya-sama. Naruto gave the ladies a bow, making them all giggle. He's the son of the Yandame Hokage, so he's not an ordinary visitor. I, I was just showing him around. And you decided to show him your room, asked the black-haired lady. And no. Then why are you still holding his hand, asked the green-haired girl. Momoko dropped his hand like a hot potato, I was just leading him to the entrance. I'm sure Tsunade-sama is leaving soon and I don't want them to wait for us. Ah, Momoko-chan, said the blue-haired girl, there's no rush. Why don't you introduce us? Naruto looked at Momoko, who shyly looked back at him. Naruto-kun, allow me to introduce my sisters. Naruto's eyes widened, this is Kurumuheim, she said referring to the blue-haired girl, this is Biskaheim, she gestured to the green-haired girl. This is Minamiheim, she said to the brown-haired girl, and this is Nanakoheim. Naruto stood tall and bowed to the princesses, my name is Namake Zuzumaki Naruto, a genin of Kanahigakur no Sato. It is a pleasure to meet you all. Oh, he is cute. So cute. I love his hair. Your eyes are so blue. Naruto stood tall and gulped as they all walked towards him, and he wondered if he should run when he had the chance. It had been a few years since Jiraiya last visited the daimyo and his family, and as much as he liked to refer to the daimyo as an old man, the man was truly getting old. His hair was now as white as Jiraiya's own, and his face had sunken into a permanent loose frown. There were dark bags under his eyes, and his ever-trusted fan shook with every tremble of the hand. The sage wondered if Tsunade saw some sort of sickness inside the man, he made a note to ask her about it later. Either way, it was clear to Jiraiya that the combined leadership of Hai no Kuni would soon come to an end. The daimyo looked to have a few more years inside him to dine and wine, but Sarutobi sensei was another question. There was no doubt that the Sandame Hokage was still an extremely powerful shinobi, but being Hokage was a strenuous job, and as much as he wanted to keep up pretenses, he could no longer hide his age. Jiraiya knew his sensei only had a few years left, and he wanted the old man to enjoy himself before the end. A new generation of leaders had to be prepared soon, but the pickings were slim. Hikaru Uji, the heir apparent of the daimyo, was a 26-year-old man who looked to be turning 40. Try as he must, the prince's heavy steps betrayed his ever-growing weight, despite being well hidden behind his thick and loose silk robes. Sweat gleamed on his drooped jowls as he hurried up the steps, a slight limp, betraying his overindulgence in the bedroom, Jiraiya recognized a pulled groin when he saw one. But despite it all, the prince rushed to greet Jiraiya with an excited grin. Jiraiya-sama, he cried loudly, a cloud of perfume following closely behind him, it's great to see you again. It has truly been too long. Indeed, it has, Hikaru Uji, the sage replied as he greeted the young man with a smile, you're a man grown now. How have you been lately? Should I expect my invitation to your royal wedding soon? The prince laughed, hands on his belly. Dear me, not yet. He slyly smiled at Jiraiya, I'm still a young man, free as a bird. I'll enjoy myself a bit more, before I shackle myself down. Jiraiya chuckled, a man after my own heart. You should have told me you were coming. Hikaru gave a sly grin. Ah, this was but a spur-of-a-moment visit. Had I the time I would have prepared a welcoming party fitting of the great Jiraiya-sama. There are many new girls in the capital, you've yet to taste, and they're all sweeter than the sweetest summer wine. Jiraiya felt his heart flutter as he returned a grin. 
Oh, do tell, he muttered. There are these three sisters, all from Kaminari no Kuni, tanned as caramel and smooth as silk, each sweeter than the last. The prince leaned in, they follow this new trend, he whispered. Under the eyebrows, they're all hairless, bald as the day they were born. He 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 he. Jiraiya nearly drooled, smooth to the touch? Smooth to the tongue. Ho ho ho. Unfortunately, continued the prince with a sigh, father has confined me to the palace until I finish my studies. Jiraiya grunted in frustration, it's not the best. But I'm sure father will have our chefs whip up the most amazing meal for you. We'll have to settle for savory meats over sweet flesh tonight, Jiraiya-sama. Nonsense. Jiraiya clapped a hand on the prince's shoulder, I shall teach you personally tonight. A great sage such as myself, can teach anything to anyone. They both grinned, we shall conduct these lessons in the city, away from the prying eyes of your peers. To hide our secret lessons, we shall pretend to be tourists, hiring the local delicacies, to blend in. They both drooled, I think three sisters and a few more dancers will suffice, don't you? Most definitely, Hikaru excitedly nodded, this may even perhaps inspire your next book. It definitely will. Let's go. An iron fist struck Jiraiya's face, and he was launched into a far stone wall, a white blur of hair that bounced off the surface with a splatter of blood. It happened in a split second, and from the rubble, Jiraiya looked up to see Tsunade towering over the now cowering prince. My apologies for the interruption, Hikaruji, she said sweetly. But I'm afraid I am duty-bound to stop my lecherous teammate from corrupting our future leader. Jiraiya saw the prince tremble, before the Senju princess, now. Your father has requested we all join him for dinner. Please make your way to the dining hall, before the food gets cold. She glanced at Jiraiya, I shall bring my teammate to join you, after I've healed him. At once, Tsunade-sama. The prince bowed to the princess and ran off as fast as he could, stumbling with every limp. From the ground, Jiraiya smiled at the familiar pain. No one ever hit him quite like Tsunade. Strong, but restrained, painful, but affectionate. She struck him with familiarity, and as he rested on the ground, he enjoyed the sight of her walking toward him with an angry glare. She looked very beautiful when angry. You really want me to kill you, don't you? He groaned as she knelt by him, slowly healing his broken face. To be honest, he muttered in pain, if I had to choose a way to go, being killed by one of your punches would be my first choice. She flicked his swollen cheek, but he still smiled. At least I'd get to see your beautiful angry face as I die. That's an image I'd gladly bring with me to the afterlife. She chuckled, you'll never change, will you? Something's never change, Heim. He stared into her eyes, briefly allowing his old feelings to surface, you can leave me for another ten years, and I'll still be the same. I'll always your enchanted idiot. Tsunade smiled, her eyes softening, finishing healing his cheek, you're too old to be flirting like this. I'm too old to waste any more time. He grunted as he stood up, offering her a hand, and now that you're returning to the village. You better get used to my incessant flirting. She grabbed his hand with a chuckle, it'll be like when we're Jenin again. If I recall correctly, you never flirted with me when we were Jenin, you just teased me a lot. Her chest jiggled with every mirthful chuckle, tempting his eyes. You spent way more time with Orochimaru than you ever did with me. Most of that time spent was me trying to get Orochimaru to help me flirt with you. He chuckled as he let go of her hand, his fingers lingering on hers, now that I'm no longer held back by him. You better be ready. I'm coming after you full force, Heim. She laughed, just don't be disappointed when I beat you back, idiot. He shrugged with a smile, you'll heal me like you always do, and I'll keep coming back for more. He smirked at her before walking ahead, you can give up on me giving up. Come on, she said as she walked past him, we don't want to keep the daimyo waiting. He saw the smile on her face, but he still lingered behind, appreciating the view. The daimyo ruled over Hai no Kuni, and despite the royal family's reliance on Kanoha, the lord still formally stood over the Hokage. His daughters, by extension, should be treated with the utmost respect equal to those of the Hokage's family. They were the princesses of their country, the daughters of Hai no Kuni, they represented their values, and their strengths, but were allowed none of their weaknesses. They were raised to be perfect, regal, and elegant. But upon meeting them in person, Naruto realized they were quite intimidating as well. Sat in a half circle, five princesses stared directly across at him. A comfortable picnic blanket was spread along the lush grass under the sakura trees, and the soft breeze rained down the late summer blossoms upon them. 
He couldn't help but watch the petals fall, all somehow missing the open teacups the princess's servant had prepared. Even for a ninja like Naruto, the servants were quite stealthy, able to produce an entire meal of snacks and delicacies before him without alerting him. Perhaps he was nervous, as the five girls continued to stare at him. So, came the voice of Kurumuheim, the blue-haired princess who looked to be only a few years older than himself. Naruto-san, was it? You're the son of the late Yandame Hokage, she continued, a small smile gracing her full pink lips. Yes, Haim sama he answered with a nod. I've seen some pictures of the Yandame, added Minami Haim, who had light brown hair and warm hazel eyes. She looked to be one of the eldest in the group, at least 15 or 16 years old. Your father was a very handsome man in his time. She smiled, a hand on her cheek, and you clearly have inherited his looks. You'll become quite the attractive man in a few years. I think he's already quite cute, chimed in Biskaheim, her vibrant green hair and light purple eyes dancing with mirth. She looked quite different from her sisters, her facial structure didn't resemble the typical girls found in Hai no Kuni. He wondered if her mother was from another country, but she was indeed very beautiful. She looked to be around the same age as Kurumuheim, only a few years older than him. We don't see many blonde-haired boys around here, and look at his big blue eyes. Naruto managed to remain calm and simply bowed, his ANBU training kicking in, thank you, Haim-sama. This is your first time visiting the capital? asked Nanako Haim, her jet-black hair silky and luscious, bouncing in a bob cut. She looked to be older as well, perhaps the same age if not a little older than Minami Haim, around 16 years old. Your timing is quite opportune. The capital is quite nice, this time of year. If you plan to stay a little longer, we host a beautiful autumn festival as well. Unfortunately, Haim-sama, I'm afraid Jiraiya-sama and Tsunade-sama are needed back in Kanoha as soon as possible, so we should be leaving before long. Boo, that's too bad, whined Kurumuheim, and here I was hoping to get to know you more. Calm yourself, Kurumu-chan, admonished Nanako-haim, Momo-chan has clearly claimed Naruto-san for herself, so please refrain from being overly familiar. And oh, I have not, cried the silent Momoko, who blushed a bright red as she glared at her sisters. Huh, muttered Naruto in confusion, wondering if he had somehow become Momokoheim's new bodyguard. You clearly have, added Minami with a smirk, why else would you bring a visiting prince to your room the first day you met? Momoko looked ready to pass out, I was just showing around the palace. Biska sighed, her finger flicking her lower lip and thought, Kanoha, huh? Not my first choice as a home, but I guess it is close to the capital. It'd be nice to be married and still stay in Haino Kuni. If you ever miss home, you can visit any time you want. It's only a day away, by carriage. She winked at Momoko as she smirked, and Naruto-san is certainly more attractive than most other princes we see, so I can understand why. T that's not it at all. Momoko cried upon deaf ears. You certainly work fast, Momo-chan. Kuruma laughed, I didn't even know you were so excited to leave home, but I guess you saw your chance and took it. She sighed. I was going to wait until I reached 16 before marrying but if I had met Naruto-san first, I guess I could be persuaded to leave earlier. Naruto tilted his head in confusion, excuse me, but what are we talking about? Minami smiled at his confusion, you're a visiting prince, Naruto-san. We see many potential suitors like you around here. His eyes widened in realization, but she continued, Kaminari no Kuni sent a convoy, just last month led by their daimyo's son. They came bearing gifts and goods, but didn't make too well an impression, that one. None of us really liked him, he was arrogant and filled with cheap humor. She winked at Naruto, but so far, you're doing quite well. You're well-spoken and polite, not to mention you're our countryman. I'd be surprised if father didn't try something after you leave. I, I am just here as a genin accompanying Jiraiya-sama. Naruto waved his hands and shook his head, and I am by no way a prince. My father was the Yandame, but I was raised as a soldier, not as nobility. I'm sure Daimyo-sama wouldn't allow one of his precious daughters to live in the barracks with me. They giggled at him, but Momoko only stared on with an intense blush. And I'm way too young to be thinking about marriage. Most betrothals happen very early, Naruto-san. Nanako smiled at him, her voice as silky as her hair, most of our older sisters had their marriage arranged before they were even born. There were a lot of us, so by the time we were born, we were lucky enough to have some freedom when it comes to marriage, because most alliances have already been formed. She giggled. But a son of a Hokage is hard to pass up for father, especially one as infamous as the Yandame. 
and I think it'll be fun to marry a shinobi. Visca giggled with a small blush, it's certainly more interesting than marrying a normal prince. Most palaces are the same, no matter where we go. They follow the same rules and traditions, most of the time. The same maids and servants with the same traded tea and delicacies. She gave Naruto a pointed stare, but living in one of the hidden villages sounds very interesting. It will certainly be much more exciting. And Shinobi, muttered Kurumu as she looked at Naruto, scanning him up and down, you are much more manly than the usual princes. I'm sure given time, you'd be quite strong yourself, Naruto-san. She winked at him. I'd much rather have my husband protect me and be my hero than have some security detail of strangers around all the time. Remember Asuma-san, asked Minami with a small blush, he was certainly a strong-looking treat. Do you know him, Naruto-san, asked Nanako with a smile, he's the son of the Sandam Hokage. Naruto's eyes widened, but she continued. He used to be one of the twelve guardians, and we would see him standing around father all the time. He was so handsome and manly. Too bad he refused a marriage offer from father, she said with a sigh, Sayakane really liked him, but he left before she could even say goodbye. Now she's stuck in Tetsu no Kuni, surrounded by samurai. I think Asuma-san has a girlfriend back in Kanoha, added Biska, I overheard some of the guards gossiping about it. That's too bad, Minami sighed, I wouldn't mind marrying Asuma-san, even though he is quite a bit older. Naruto gulped as the attention was put back on him. They were all staring at him and Kurumuhime moved to sit by his side, her shoulders touching his as she refilled his cup of tea. He stammered, but before he could even speak, Biskaheim took to his other side, smiling at him as she bit her lower lip. He felt his heart pound against his chest. Naruto-san, Kuruma said, how old are you exactly? She was close, too close. He could smell her sweet shampoo as her hair tickled his face, and his eyes couldn't help but waver before her unyielding, vibrant, purple eyes. But when he looked down, he saw her chest, and blood rushed to his face as she bounced closer to him. I, I am almost nine, he managed to say. I'll be nine next week, Kurumuheim sama Oh, so I'm five years older than you. She giggled, I thought you were older. You're really tall for a nine-year-old. I think you're almost the same height as me. I guess ninjas grow faster, said Biskaheim, hugging his arm, because I'm only three years older than you, and you're taller than me. Naruto glanced at the green-haired princess and blushed again. She was also incredibly beautiful, her eyes sparked a brilliant purple, just a shade deeper than her sister's, and her smirk was wonderfully alluring. Her breath tickled his cheek as she spoke, and he could almost feel her grin. G-genetics, I guess. Can you two not cling to him like that? Naruto heard Momoko and looked to see her glaring at her sisters, balling her fist as she punched the ground. It's unsightly, and father will chastise you if he saw. Ah, uh, Momo-chan, teased Kurumu, are you jealous we stole your prince? He's not my prince. Momoko yelled as her face matched her hair. He's my friend and you're making him uncomfortable. I don't think he's uncomfortable, Biskaheim said with a smile, her breath still tickling his cheek, I think he likes being so close to us. She leaned closer to her him, whispering into his ear. Don't you, Naruto-kun? I, I am a genin of Kanahiga Kurno Sato, he managed to say, you are all daughters of Daimyo-sama, princesses of Haino Kuni. I am sworn to protect all of you, so if you want to be so close to me, I will have no objections. Ah, you're just too cute, Naruto-san, exclaimed Nanakoheim, her long black hair blowing in the wind. Too bad you're only nine years old. If you were older, we could request to keep you here as one of the twelve guardians. We'd love to have you around every day. Just imagine, giggled Minami, Naruto-san dressed as one of the guardians as a child. That's just too cute. Kuruma hugged his arm tighter, I'd love to have you protect me all the time, Naruto-kun. You must be strong, right? asked Biska, hugging and pulling his arm closer, you're the Yandame's son, you can protect us, right? Naruto felt lightheaded, but nodded, W with my life, Haim-sama. Oh, squealed Kurumu and Biska, the former kissing him on his cheek, you're my hero, Naruto-kun. He blushed to the roots of his hair, but then he felt Biska kiss his other cheek, and mine. Naruto wondered if he would pass out, but suddenly he felt someone pull him forward with the collar of his shirt, and he found himself lifted from the ground and onto his feet. His arms were free from the princesses, but he saw staring into the teary eyes and blushing face of Momokoheim. Her hands were trembling as she held onto his shirt, and her cute red lips looked flushed and pouty, he felt her lean forward, staring at his mouth. 
His eyes widened as she closed hers. But she then squinted her eyes and yelled, scaring him as she headbutt his chin. Naruto was knocked back into Kurumu and Biska's arms, both of them holding him as he nursed his chin. He looked up at his newest friend and saw her burning face, her eyes filled with tears as her whole body trembled. He wondered if she meant to attack him like that, because it almost seemed like, seemed like she was going to kiss him. Ah, Momochan chickened out, muttered Nanamiheim. Nanakoheim stood with a smile, hugging her baby sister close from behind. It's okay, Momochan. You're just too young. Give it a few more years, and it'll seem more natural. W what is going on, he asked in general. Momoko glanced at him through her tears, I idiot. Huh? Dinner with the royal family had never been an enjoyable experience for Jiraiya. Sure, he enjoyed the occasional drunken meal with either the daimyo or the eldest prince, but when the daimyo's wife and concubine were involved, he just felt constricted. Every morsel tasted dry and overly sweet without sake, but the last thing we wanted was to drink under the scrutinizing gaze of Madame Shirjimi. The ever-growing woman had never enjoyed his company, and he knew she blamed him or his works for corrupting the prince, but she insisted on staring at him while she hugged slash strangled her cat. If only he had Tsunade's lack of awareness, because she was downing one cup after another. But the other woman sat at the table, the much younger and much more beautiful concubine was another story. She looked stoic, almost nervous. She sat silently in a perfect pose, her dainty hands only reaching for the sake when her husband's cup was empty. She ate with the grace of a perfect lady and had scarcely made a sound since dinner began. As the only other woman to birth the daimyo a son, Jiraiya expected a more boisterous woman, but she was anything but. With her red hair and violet eyes, Jiraiya had briefly wondered if he was looking at Kushina, but that illusion was quickly broken. Lady Harana may have shared some of Kushina's physical traits, but she had none of her fire or charm. This woman was stone cold, and even for a shinobi of Jiraiya's stature, he commended her ability to hide her thoughts. Her face betrayed nothing, but that alone made her a bit suspicious. Jiraiya wondered what she had to hide. Are you sure I can't convince you two to stay the night? asked the daimyo, his face flushed from the sake, we have more than enough vacant rooms. Why not travel in the daylight tomorrow morning? Jiraiya smiled, the Hokage commanded me to bring Tsunade back to the village as soon as possible. Sorry, daimyo-sama, but I'll be sure to enjoy your hospitality the next chance I get. Tsunade sighed, with a drunken hiccup, unfortunately, Sarutobi-sensei, is getting old. He is impatient and needs us back as soon as we can. The daimyo sighed, well, if you must. He then smiled, with the two of you returning to Kanoha, I do feel better about the coming days. I'm sure you'll make quick work of the bandits. Jiraiya saw a flicker of emotion come from Harana, but it vanished just as quickly. Bandits, no matter how many, are still just bandits. They are unorganized and lack the discipline. We'll make short work of them, Daimyo-sama. You can rest assured of that. The old man chuckled as Tsunade smirked, it has been a long while. I'd like to blow off some steam by plowing through a bunch of bandits. Jiraiya shivered at her vicious eyes, I wonder if I could convince Sensei to send me to them. Jiraiya sighed, I'm sure you can. Tsunade-sama, came the unfamiliar, but surprisingly sweet voice of Haruna. Thank you again for taking care of my son. She smiled at the Sanin, but Jiraiya wondered if it was sincere. If it isn't for you, I'm not sure if my poor boy would have lasted this long. We are in your debt. Tsunade downed another cup and waved her off, I'm just doing my job, Haruna. You don't need to thank me. Just make sure the boy takes his medicine on time and daily. Before we know it, he'll be grown and married. I pray you are right, Tsunade-sama, Haruna answered with a bow. Speaking of marriage, started the daimyo, I can't help but notice that young Namike's kuen is around that age. Jiraiya and Tsunade looked to the man, the latter, sobering. Has the Sandame looked for potential matches for the boy? He is the son of the Yandame Hokage, and he's already a genin. I doubt he'd be unattached for long. Jiraiya laughed, the boy is talented and strong for his age, but he's still just a boy, immature and innocent. He is much like his father in that regard, I'm afraid. He smiled, all he thinks about is ninjutsu and becoming stronger. I doubt he'd be interested in a wife until much later in this life. Of course, I won't have the boy marry now, added the daimyo, I'm simply thinking of a betrothal. He and my youngest daughter are of a similar age and similar standing. 
why not set them up for the future? I've long wanted to marry one of my daughters, to a Hokage son. He chuckled, the Sandame son already rejected my offer, so I hope the Yandames would be different. My lord, interrupted Harana, Momoko is still very young and is much too free-spirited to be tied down so early. Please give her a few more years of freedom. My love, I am simply planning for her future. The daimyo rested a hand on Haruna's, Momoko is my pride and joy, and I want nothing more than for her to be happy. Being married in Kanoha will be much more suitable for her than to be stuck as a lady in a distant palace. Harana sighed and nodded as the daimyo turned back to Jiraiya, and when you look at them, don't they remind you of the Yandame and his wife? Jiraiya chuckled, they do, he said with a smile, a blonde-haired idiot, with a red-haired beauty. Why don't you offer my suggestion to the Sandame, Jiraiya? The lord smiled, I'm sure he wouldn't oppose. Actually, Daimyo-sama, said Tsunade with a clear voice, now completely sober after a burst of chakra, Naruto's parents named Jiraiya and me as his godparents. If there is any suggestion of a betrothal, it would be our decision for now, at least until the boy is of age or rank. Perfect, exclaimed the daimyo, so, what do you think? I'm afraid Naruto is already quite enamored with a girl back home. Tsunade stared at the frowning man, they are the best of friends and have been inseparable ever since they met. It's still completely innocent, but I am sure they will develop into something more in the future. As his godmother, I wouldn't want to force him into a lifelong commitment without giving him the chance to find true love. Surely it's only a childish crush, the daimyo added. Perhaps, but I still want to give them a chance to grow and develop. She smiled with a dangerous twinkle in her eyes, let's hold off on this discussion until later in the future. I'm sure once Naruto and Momokoheim are grown, we will have a clearer picture of how to proceed. If the day comes when Naruto and Momokoheim are both unattached with no suitors of equal standing, I'd be glad to resume this conversation. The daimyo gulped at her glance, but turned to Jiraiya, what about you, Jiraiya? When it comes to our godchild, he smiled at Tsunade, before turning back to the man, she's the boss. Well, she's the boss in general for me, but she's the boss in this case as well. His pinky lightly brushed against Tsunade's hand under the table, and he chuckled when she subtly flicked him away. I agree with Tsunade. Let's leave this conversation for the future, Daimyo-sama. The Daimyo sighed, very well. The rest of the dinner was quite uneventful. The Daimyo continued to drink and Tsunade resumed her drinking, catching up after clearing her buzz. Madame Shurjimi continued her rotational glare between Jiraiya and Hikaruji, obviously wondering how to keep the two apart for the rest of their lives. But ever silently, Harana sat motionlessly, only moving to refill her husband's cup she looked aimlessly ahead, staring mindlessly at nothing. She was obviously strange, and Jiraiya couldn't help but wonder about her. She was beautiful and mysterious, and that alone made her very interesting. After dinner, Jiraiya finally escaped the fiery glare of the daimyo's wife. Madame Shurjimi and Lady Harana both left along with the prince, leaving the daimyo and his guards to walk Jiraiya and Tsunade out. Shizun had rejoined them, having prepared and administered Yamadauji's medicine, and they were all heading to the garden, hoping to find Naruto and Momoko. But they all saw something very interesting. Harder, Naruto Kuen. A bit more to the left. Oh, your hands are magic. You like my feet, don't you, Naruto Kuen? In the gardens, beneath the Sakura trees, were the princesses, each being pampered by four copies of Naruto. Each princess had a clone massaging their shoulders, who also acted as a human pillow, because they were all basically resting on him. Another two clones sat to their sides, massaging their arms, and the last clone had their feet on his lap, gently massaging their tired souls. Each princess was staring at him dreamily, but he did everything he could to avoid looking at them. The poor boy was as red as his mother's hair, but could do nothing but obey, in the face of duty. He was a genin of Kanahigakur no Sato, and he would do anything for the princesses of his country, even if it meant touching them and hearing sounds that made him feel weird. You know, started the daimyo as Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Shizen stared at the situation with widened eyes, it doesn't have to be Momoko. It seems all my remaining daughters will gladly marry the boy. Please pass my intention to the Sandame. I really need to find husbands for my remaining girls. And maybe, gulped Jiraiya as his mind was flooded with new literary ideas, I if in the future, you really can't find suitable husbands for the princesses. He resisted a giggle. Naruto could perhaps, he could perhaps take care of all of them. Now, now, don't be crass, Jiraiya dash. Before the daimyo could refute, Tsunade launched Jiraiya into a stone wall, splattering in a poof of blood. 
Shizen held Tantan and backed away, leaving the cowering daimyo with the fuming Sanmin. Naruto The sixteen clones all looked to see their godmother and smiled at her, almost immediately calming her down, but Tsunade still had a glare in her eyes. Which one of you is the original? They all looked around before turning to the Sanmin, boss isn't here, Tsunade-sama. He left with Momokoheim. They all realized that Momoko was not among her sisters, where did they go? They went to her room, answered Kurumu with a giggle, all alone. Momochan was getting jealous of us, so she ran away to her room. Minami sighed as she rested on her clone, Naruto Kuen followed her. I guess he was trying to apologize. She pinched one of the clone's cheeks, you are just too cute. Father, cried Biska, can I keep Naruto Kuen here? He's better than all our guards already. He can protect us and massage us all at the same time. Nanako giggled, he even said he'd protect us with his life, she winked at her clones, isn't that right, my little hero? I want Naruto Kuen as my personal bodyguard, cried Kurumu, hugging one of the clones to her chest, you can get rid of all of my other guards, father. I don't need them anymore. All I need is Naruto Kuen. Hey, you can't get just have him all to yourself, cried Biska, and I called dibs on him first. Nanako cleared her throat, girls, I think Momochan called dibs first. Biska and Kuruma pouted, but I'm sure she'll allow you to take a clone or five for yourself. Minami giggled, well, he did say he can make up to a thousand clones, so we all have more than enough of him between us. She sighed in comfort as her four clones worked their magic on her body. I really need this in my life. Tsunade murmured the daimyo, you're right. I think it's best you take the boy back to Kanoha for now. He shakily turned to the Sanin, it's clear that he is beyond his years in some things. Let's resume our conversation once the boy matures. I'd much rather he marry one of my daughters after he gets all this energy out of his system. Tsunade sighed, you clones disperse now. She commanded, the original should come back once the memories are shared. Ah, no, cried the princesses. Now. Hi, Tsunade-sama. The original Naruto had easily caught up with Momokoheim, but she was ignoring him. She ran back to her room and closed the door, and he stood silently by the door. He could sense that she was leaning by the door, her back to him, but he didn't know what to say. She was his newest friend, but she was also his first friend to ever ignore him. He didn't know how to react to such a situation. Was she mad at him? Was she embarrassed because she tried to kiss him? Did she really want to be alone, or did she want him to apologize? What did he even have to apologize for? Naruto was beyond confused, but decided to knock on the door. Momoko-chan, are you mad at me? Did I do something wrong? He waited, but there was no answer. As I said before, I'm really not used to associating with people around my age, so if I did something wrong, I apologize. I'm not mad at you, she said from behind the door. Then why are you hiding behind the door? You're my friend, right? She asked. Of course. You're the first friend I've ever had, Naruto Kuen. He nodded as he listened closely, I've always wanted a friend away from my siblings. Someone who won't baby me all the time. Naruto understood completely. I guess now that I've met you, I was just a little jealous that my sisters also like you so much. I, I wanted you for myself. Naruto realized that he was to Momoko as Ino was to him. I had a lot of fun today with you, but I know you'll have to leave soon. He heard her voice break, I don't want you to leave so soon, or at all. I know that if I ask father to let you stay as my bodyguard, he might allow it. So, if I ask you to stay here with me forever, would you? Naruto didn't know what to say. I want to keep my friend here with me. I want you to stay with me. He stared at the closed door. If I asked you to stay here with me forever, will you stay? Naruto closed his eyes as he activated his ring, his hand gently holding onto Ino's. Holding onto his best friend's hand, he felt his heart flutter as usual, and he knew better than anything that he belonged in Kanoha with her. No matter how much fun he had with the princesses, his home was in Kanoha, with Ino, together in their little treehouse. He pondered the possibility of staying in the palace with Momoko, but the thought of a crying Ino immediately turned it into an impossibility. I'm sorry, Momoko-chan, he whispered, I already promised my best friend back home that I'd stay with her forever. I can't break my promise to her. It was silent behind the door for a while. 
I see, she whispered back eventually, her voice faint in the evening wind. Then I wish you a safe journey home, Naruto-san. Momoko-chan. Goodbye. He heard her footsteps as he felt her presence fade from the room, she had returned to the secret passage. He felt his chest stricken, as if in pain. He felt like he'd hurt his friend, and it felt terrible. She was so happy, but she was crying at the end. He wondered briefly if one day Ino would leave him if he'd react, like Momoko. He felt horrible and could only whisper an apology to the wind. Then, in a sudden, a wave of memories hit him. His clones had dispersed and he knew he had to leave. Gigi and Bachan were waiting for him to leave, to return to Kanoha. His family was waiting for him back home, Jichan, Kaki and Ai, Commander Ryu, and all his siblings were waiting for his return. Ino-chan, she was waiting for him to come home. He felt Ino squeeze his hand back and warmth return to him. He smiled, because he was going home. Momoko ran and ran, as fast as she could, passing one room after another, in the hidden passages. Hot tears fell from her eyes, and down her cheeks, but she didn't care. She had to run farther away, far enough that she wouldn't feel Naruto's strong presence. His golden chakra felt so bright and warm, brighter and warmer than the sun, but she needed to be away from him. She didn't want to feel him anymore, not when he rejected her so easily. She didn't stop until the far side of the palace, a place she would never usually go. It was close to her mother's room, just above it, in fact. She could sense her mother inside the room, but as revolting as her presence was, it was a better alternative than her warm sun leaving. But she heard her mother whisper something to someone. Momoko looked down, peeping through the eyehole through her tears. She couldn't see who her mother was talking to, nor could she sense who it was, but there was someone in the room with her, and she was whispering something. Tell Danzo-sama, we must act quickly. I'm sure Jiraiya or Tsunade saw through me. How much time do we have? I don't know. Momoko heard her mother cry, just tell him to act as soon as possible. Very well. Momoko felt an odd chill down her back. She knew she was not meant to hear that, so she slowly turned away, gently slipping her way back into the darkness. She held her breath and didn't breathe until she could no longer feel her mother's presence. She was now stuck in the middle, somewhere she would feel neither her warm light nor dark chills. She wrapped her arms around herself, hoping to hide away forever. This was all for now. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked it and that you will be back for more. Please like, share and subscribe. See ya.